Hi, I'm Dr. Lance Von Stade, and as a chiropractor, it's my primary purpose to help people get more life per moment. How do we experience life? When asked about our senses, most people will list these five in black, but they often forget to list the blue one, the sixth sense, proprioception. Proprioception is your brain's ability to perceive where every joint, muscle, tendon, tissue is in your body, and not only access that information, but store that information so that you can access it any time that you might need it. Maybe it's stepping off of a curb, maybe it's walking down a dark hallway. If you want to experience this, simply put your finger behind your back. While it's back there, you can't see it, smell it, taste it, or even touch it unless you reach with your opposite hand, but you know exactly where it is in space. You even know that there's not now two fingers because you can feel that intrinsic feeling of proprioception. And that information is very useful when moving, but many people don't recognize how important it is even in the learning process. In the book, The Brain's Way of Healing by Norman Deutsch, he is an expert in synaptogenesis neuroplasticity. This is the way that the brain changes itself in response to new information. He talks about the fact that our brains evolved with physical movement required to seek out new dynamic environments as we were growing, to seek out new food sources as we were evolving, and as the learning happened, it happened simultaneously with the physical movement. So now, if you think about in the case of stiffness, where we have decreased motion, in his book he says, as we become immobile, we hear less, we see less, and we process less new information, and the brain atrophies as a, as a response of the lack of stimulation. This mechanism is highly rampant in our culture, and chiropractic is a great way of offsetting this motion. So if you see this stiffness, you might ask, why on earth would such a brilliant system as capable as proprioception running through the cerebellum to the thalamus and out to the association pathways of sight, smell, taste, and touch, if that amazing system is present, why on earth would it produce stiffness? And if you think about this again from an evolutionary biology perspective, originally infection was a major contributor to inflammation. And inflammation is not something new. We've been hearing about this for almost a century. It was in the 70s already written in medical textbooks, Robin's Pathology. It's the 2004 cover of Time magazine. This is a, an issue in our culture. And it's not just because infection was a mechanism back in the day. It's the fact that now that infection is no longer a primary issue in our modern culture, there are so many other sources of inflammation. It might be toxins in our air, our water, our food. It might be the omega-6 to omega-3 pro-inflammatory fatty acid to anti-inflammatory fatty acid ratio being off. This is especially true with trans fats, with uh, fried foods, processed foods. Emotional stress, macro traumas or injuries, or mechanical stress in micro traumas. So my mentor, Dr. Dan Murphy, mentioned recently he saw a study showed that high school students nowadays are in this position 5,000 hours per year. You can imagine how that might be contributing to some inflammation. And when inflammation is formed in the body as a result of infection or any of these mechanisms, it forms what's called fibrosis. You can think of fibrosis as scar tissue in the case of an injury. You could think about it as a fibrotic wall or encapsulation that the body produces to wall off an infection so it doesn't cause more damage. Or you can think about it as an inflammatory connective tissue adhesion within a joint. So when we have fibrosis in the body, and it's even said in Robin's pathology, that stiffness in joints is a response from the inflammatory fibrotic cascade. When you have that stiffness, and like Norman Deutsch said, as we become immobile, we see less, hear less, smell less, process less new information. That decreased stiffness, or that increase in stiffness decreases our ability to have proprioceptive input to the brain. And as we lose that information, we decrease the ability of all of our association pathways, how we perceive our environment, to not be able to summate as easily. So the chiropractic adjustment 
is a very unique mechanism that comes in and removes or decreases stiffness so that you can get proprioceptive feedback back to the brain. How it does this is there is something called active range of motion, which is basically I can take my finger and actively move it to the end range. Then there's passive range of motion, which means I can take my finger and move it to its passive range of motion. The chiropractic adjustment, we are specifically trained to go to the passive range of motion and go very quickly and comfortably specifically into the adjustic range of motion or the paraphysiological space without going to the area where you would have an injury or damaged tissue. By doing this, you stimulate the receptors of proprioception, allow the brain to reconnect accurately with where the joints, muscles, tissues are in the body. So now the brain can not only move with more quality as it coordinates movement, but it also now is running that pathway through the cerebellum where 80% of your brain's neurons are through the thalamus, which integrates and relays information and increases the ability for you to perceive your environment. When people perceive their environment with more accuracy and clarity, they are able to gain more information. When they have all the information, they can make very accurate strategies to get their needs met and get more life per moment. With chiropractic care, you can get more life per moment. That's why I do what I do as a chiropractor. So if you're not already subscribed or signed up for these videos, feel free to click the button, share with a friend, and in future videos, we'll even start talking about the mechanism of how this proprioception pathway, before it enters the cerebellum, has an offshoot and can innervate the immune organs. And we'll talk about the neuroimmunology and how chiropractic care can contribute. Stay tuned for more. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Yeah.